Good morning, saints of God, church family, and those that are watching us out on YouTube. We come to you this morning again, uh, thanking God for the opportunity to just give a word of encouragement. And as you can see, I'm in my mobile studio this morning, and sitting in my car. And uh, we can certainly say that this is the day that the Lord has made. We are rejoicing, and I hope that you are glad in it. Uh, but I would be honest with you, this has been one of those weeks. Uh, that kind of week where you feel like you just took a punch in the gut. And as a result, if I'm totally transparent, uh, while I was happy in the Lord, uh, I'm down in spirit. I'm down in spirits. Um, and this came about really as a number of uh, events that transpired over the week. It started out with uh, Uncle Moses. Uh, Uncle Moses was the last living brother on my father's side. Uh, and now all five men have gone on to be with the Lord. And uh, they were uh, having a homegone ceremony for Uncle Moses uh, on uh, Tuesday. Um, and because of my recent surgery and the distance, I was not able to travel down to be a part of that. Uh, and then on Wednesday, uh, we found ourselves saying farewell to uh, Brother Guy V. Collins. Brother Guy V. Uh, was a dear brother, Christian brother, uh, a dear friend of ours. And uh, not only was he a good Christian man, but he was just a good person. Uh, always had a wonderful spirit about him, always had a smile on his face, uh, always willing uh, to uh, lend whatever he had to help you, uh, and always made you feel like a million bucks every time you saw him. Um, Brother Guy V perished in a crazy accident, fell off a ladder and never recovered. Uh, and he uh, was funeralized on Wednesday and we were somewhat heartbroken by that. And then, to top that off, uh, we found out on Thursday that uh, our very own sister, uh, Neva Byers, had gone on to be with the Lord. She was found in her home. She lived alone, was found in her home, uh, in her bed, had perished. And uh, it was confirmed on Thursday uh, that she had passed away the previous week. And that really just kind of took the air out of my cell. Um, and then uh, I closed out the week, uh, getting worried. Uh, one of my close coworkers uh, had tested positive for the coronavirus and he had uh, symptoms all week long. And uh, the test results came back and indeed he's uh, positive. And so he's dealing with that now and we are just keeping him in prayer that God would allow him to recover. Um, and to top all of that off, uh, we all seen the news that uh, over 170,000 people have perished as a result of this pandemic. And in many ways, it seems like we've become desensitized to that and it's just a footnote on things uh, as we try to move back to some uh, form of normalcy. But the truth is that this pandemic is still taking people out every day and people are losing their lives. And those that are contacting it, uh, even if they recover or have re the residual effects of it. And so it was that kind of week for me. And like I said, if I'm being honest, I was uh, really down in, in spirits and I just needed uh, a word from the Lord to just uh, encourage me. Um, I needed some good news. <clears throat> and so, uh, what I did uh, was I went to the the, the Word of God and uh, kind of Googled good news. And <laughs> and uh, I want to share with you a passage of Scripture that came up, and uh, it put things in perspective for me. Uh, I know we're all hoping and praying for um, a vaccine that will bring uh, this pandemic to an end. Uh, I know we're hoping that things will just turn around real soon. Uh, we've been praying and praying to ask God to be merciful. 
Um, but, you know, the truth of the matter is, even if and when there is a vaccine, and I do believe that we will eventually have a vaccine, but even if and when that happens, um, we will still have to ultimately face death. The Bible says that it's appointed unto man once to die. And after that, he will stand for the judgment. And so all of us, no matter uh, how we die, will have to die unless Jesus uh, comes back while we are still alive. But in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, Paul reminds us of some good news. And I don't know about you this morning, but I need to be reminded of some good news. And so in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, and I want to briefly read this passage of scripture for you. He says, let me now remind you, dear sisters and brothers, of the good news that I preached to you before. You welcomed it then, and you still stand firm in it. It is this good news that saves you if you continue to believe the message I told you. Unless, of course, you believed something that was never true in the first place. Paul goes on in verse number three, and he says, I passed on to you what was most important and what has also been passed on to me. And so Paul now is reminding them of this good news that he passed on to them. And what is that good news? Well, the good news is Christ died for our sins, just as the scripture said. He was buried and he was raised from the dead on the third day, just as the scripture said. So this is the good news. And you may be asking this morning, well, why is this good news? Well, this is good news because the Bible declares that because Adam and Eve disobeyed God, that sin entered into the world, and because of sin, all of us was destined for an eternal damnation. Because God said, in the day that you disobeyed me, you shall surely die. So we were already uh, what I would call stillborn spiritually. We were dead spiritually, even though we had physical life. But the good news is Jesus came. And while we were supposed to die, Jesus died in our place. Now, that alone is good news that someone will give their life for us. That someone would pay the penalty or the debt that we were supposed to pay, that someone paid that penalty for us in dying. So that in and of itself is good news. But the good news doesn't stop there because Paul went on to say that he was buried but he was raised from the dead on the third day. So the really good news, the amazing news, is that Jesus got up. He got up from the grave after three days. And his getting up from the grave is good news because it signified that now he was victorious over death and the grave. So, so this is the incredible news that we can all rejoice and keep things in perspective when we lose loved ones, uh, is that Christ came, Christ died for us, Christ came back from the dead after three days, and he now has said, those who put their trust and their faith in me will also be able to experience the same thing. And so the Bible tells us those that die in Christ shall live again. This is amazing news when your heart is heavy because loved ones are transitioning on. 
it's a good news to know that Uncle Moses, Brother Guy V, Sister Neva Byers, and many, many others, that they will live again because they died with faith in Jesus Christ. And that same thing is true for all of us that put our faith in Jesus. This is the good news today. Paul goes on in his writing to the church at Corinth here. He says um, in verse five, he was seen by Peter and then by the 12. After that, he was seen by more than 5,000 I'm sorry, 500 of his followers at one time, most of whom are still alive at the time of Paul's writing. And so Paul said that this is good news that had been validated. It wasn't just a rumor, but there were over 500 people that actually saw Jesus after his resurrection, that spoke with him, that even touched him. And so Paul is encouraging us today that this is good news that uh, we can celebrate. And it's good news that was validated by eyewitnesses. <clears throat> and then in verse 8, Paul even talks about his own personal experience with Christ. He says, last of all, as though I had been born at the wrong time, I also saw him. For I am the least of the apostles. In fact, I'm not even worthy to be called an apostle after the way that I persecuted God's church. So Paul here says, you know, I am also an apostle because Paul met Jesus on the Damascus Road. Paul was on his way to persecute Christians when he had a personal encounter with Jesus Christ. And Jesus asked Paul the question, Paul, why do you push back against me? Why do you persecute me by persecuting those who put faith in me? And so it was that encounter that Paul himself considered himself now an apostle. And he goes on in verse 10, he says, but whatever I am now, it is all because God poured out his special favor on me and not without results. <laughs> For I have worked harder than any of the other apostles. This is Paul's testimony here. He says, I worked harder than any of the other apostles in spreading this good news. But he then caught himself and he says, yet it was not I, but God who was working through me by his grace. Amen, Paul. So Paul says the good news is, the good news is that Christ died for our sins and that Christ was raised from the dead by God. And that because Jesus lives, we too shall live again if we put faith and trust in him. That is indeed good news. And I wanted to share that good news with you today. Amen. Because we all kind of get down in spirit when things happen. Sometimes, you know, these passing of loved ones catch us totally off guard. But Paul says that uh, I wish that you not weep as some weep as if they have no hope. This is in his writing to the church at uh, Thessalonica. And he says that uh, <laughs> uh, those that precede us in death, amen, will in no wise prevent us uh, from seeing the coming of the Lord and that the dead in Christ shall rise first. And then those of us that are alive and remain, we all shall be caught up to meet him in the air. That is indeed good news today. And I'm kind of reminded, amen, of a, a sermon message that I preached a couple of times about uh, God's heavenly newspaper. <laughs> and the thought there is, is that uh, uh, those of us that, uh, 
that uh, over the age of 40, man, we probably remember the newspaper, uh, getting the newspaper out of the mailbox, or perhaps you uh, had a, a paper boy that delivered your newspaper, and the newspaper would come uh, every day, and then it kind of went to uh, getting it once a week. Uh, in my hometown, they still have the newspaper, the press and banner. Um, but uh, I'm reminded of how a newspaper is put together. It has a number of different sections that deal with the areas of life that we all are interested in. And, uh, you know, the newspaper, it captures what I call uh, the life of a society, uh, a local society. That newspaper captured the life of that society. Uh, and so this morning, uh, uh, I thought about that and uh, I said, yeah, God has given us the newspaper from heaven and it's called the Bible. Uh, but if we were to think of a newspaper today and to think of the different sections in the newspaper, certainly we can see that the Bible is God's heavenly newspaper and is made up of good news. You know, on the front of the newspaper is the headliner. <clears throat> That's the headliner. And I believe the headliner in God's newspaper is simply this. God is love and God loves you. That is the headliner. God loves you and he wants to spend all eternity with you. And then right uh, after the headliner in the news, you will have a section called World News Today. Uh, and the world news for us today in God's heavenly newspaper is simply that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son so that we might not perish but have everlasting life. This is world news, and it is good news that God, through Jesus, has saved the world. And then you had the section there on marriage where there will be announcements of weddings, and in God's heavenly newspaper, there is an announcement of a wedding. It is the wedding between the bride and the groom. The groom is none other than Jesus Christ. He's come and he's proposed. And he says, uh, I will come back for my bride, the church. And so there's a big wedding that's being planned even right now. And this wedding will take place in heaven where God will present to his son, Jesus Christ, his bride, the church. And, and we will be married in heaven. And so I hope today that you have your invitation sealed and that you will be a part of this great wedding that's being planned. After the wedding section, there was always this birth collar. And in the birth column would be the announcement of those that had children. Um, but in God's newspaper, amen, we have the birth column. And it says there that uh, there is new life in Christ. There is new life in Christ. And you can experience this new life by being born again. Now, you may be saying, well, how can you be born again? This was a question that Nicodemus asked. And you are born again, this time, not by water, but you are born again by the baptism of the Holy Spirit. That is the new birth. And you receive this baptism of the Spirit when you confess your heart to Jesus Christ and ask him to be your Savior. That's in the birth column. And of course, you know, there's always the obituary section in a newspaper as well, where you can find out those who have perished. But I believe in God's obituary section of his newspaper is simply that Jesus died for you. Jesus died for you. And because he died for you, you can now live for him and so in that, the Bible encourages us that we are to die to sin so that we may be able to live for Christ. 
Amen. And we're able to do that today because we have the presence of the Holy Spirit. And then there's this, this part of the newspaper that was always my favorite. And it was the sports section. The sports section. And I believe in God's heavenly newspaper, we find in the sports section, in big, bold print, we win. We win because there is victory in Christ Jesus. Amen. Jesus sealed that victory for us uh, when he went to battle with uh, Satan. And I can imagine in my mind uh, a boxing match. And Jesus and Satan is in the ring. Uh, and uh, this boxing match took place on the cross. And, and Satan thought he had Jesus on the, on the ropes. And Satan thought he landed that uh, knockout punch uh, when Jesus died on the cross. Jesus, I can imagine in my mind, was laying there on the mat and, and, and Satan was dancing around, uh, hands raised in the air as if he had destroyed, knocked out Jesus once and for all. And I can imagine that for three rounds or for three days, Satan was prancing and dancing and, and claiming that uh, uh, he had won, only to turn around on that third round or that third day to see Jesus standing there. And I can imagine when Satan turns around because he, he he hears now that the crowd that was, you know, looking in the crowd, all of a sudden it, it gasps and Satan turns around and there's Jesus standing there. And Jesus, boom, knocks Satan out once and for all. And he did it, beloved, for you and I. And so in the sports section, we win. We win. <laughs> and also in the sports section, I can Im imagine that uh, it reminds us that uh, there's a marathon and, and that we're running a race and it's called the race of life. And it's a marathon. It's not a sprint. Amen. And that uh, uh, that there are, are people that are cheering us on. Amen. And may we, like Paul, say, I finished my course. I fought a good fight. And I've run this race called life. I've crossed over the finish line. And then there is a crown that is waiting for me, a reward that is waiting for me. Stay in the race today. Stay in the race. Keep running for Jesus because there is a reward at the finish line. Now, there's also the entertainment section that uh, in, in the newspaper, there was the entertainment session. And in there, that section, we would always be able to find out uh, our favorite shows, uh, what time they were going to be playing on television. And, and so, uh, you know, uh, on the cooking channel, we find out that Jesus is the bread of life and he is the living water. In the gardening channel, uh, we find out that he's the lily of the valley. And he is the rose of Sharon. Oh, glory to God. And then if you turn on over, turn that dial on over, amen, you'll find on the animal channel that he is the lamb of God and he is the lion of Judah. Amen, somebody. Yes, yes, yes. And, uh, you know, we used to have this show called Lifestyles of the Rich and the Famous. Well, in God's in God's newspaper, if we turn to the lifestyles of the rich and the famous. We find out, amen, that he's Lord of Lord and he's King of Kings. Yes, indeed. He is Lord of Lord and he is King of Kings. <clears throat> amen. And then, you know, uh, there was always the real estate section in the newspaper. And when I flip over in God's real estate section, I find out that there are many mansions and one of them has got my name on it. Hallelujah, somebody. Yeah, Jesus said, if I go away to prepare a place for you, I shall return for you. But in my father's house, there are many mansions. And in the real estate session, God reminds us that there's a new heaven, new earth, new city. The New Jerusalem, 
All of that is waiting for us in the real estate section. Then, of course, we got the comics. Now, no newspaper will be complete without the comics. Yes. <laughs> and when we, we flip over into God's newspaper in the comic section, we find out that laughter is medicine for the soul. Yes, laughter is medicine for the soul. And not only that, but we can laugh in the midst of our circumstances. Why? Because we have the peace of God that surpasses all understanding and we are filled with the joy of the Spirit. The joy of the Lord. Amen, somebody. Getting to the back of the newspaper, there was always uh, the clothing section uh, where they would advertise new styles. Amen. Uh, new fashions that were coming in. But in God's newspaper, amen, we find in the clothing section that we are suited up in the whole arm of God. Yes, we got the whole arm of God that we are suited up in. Uh, the breastplate of righteousness, the helmet of salvation, amen. Our um, waist girded uh, with the truth. Our feet shodded with the preparation of the gospel, amen. And then we got the sword of the spirit, uh, all of these things we have in the fashion section or the clothing section of God's newspaper, amen. And then of course, every newspaper closes out with the classified ad, the classified ads. That's where people would advertise things that they had for sale things that they were, were willing to give away. But here's the thing, beloved. In God's newspaper, in the classified ad, it simply reads this. Wanted. Lost souls. That's what God is looking for today. He's seeking for lost souls. Those who have not given their life to Christ. Those who have not surrendered those who have not experienced eternal life. I want to close by telling you that life is often full of disappointments and that dying is a part of living. But that's not how the story ends. In God's newspaper, there is good news. Jesus often said this during his earthly ministry. I come to share the good news of the kingdom of heaven. And the good news is you and I have opportunity to live another life beyond this life. And it is an eternal life, which means it is a life that will have no ending. And it will be a life where we are eternally in the presence of God and sin will be no more. It will be that perfect life that God envisioned for us way back in the Garden of Eden when he first created the human race. It is available to you, but you must receive the invitation. You must receive the gift the gift of salvation that is found in Christ Jesus. And I hope that encourages you today. I hope that is good news that when hard times and sad times and bad times show up, remind yourself of the good news that one day, one day, all of this will pass away. And the Bible tells us that it hasn't even entered into the hearts of men those things that he has in store for us. And I hope you see that as good news today. And as I close, I want to make an announcement, amen. On the 30th of August, the last Sunday in this month, <laughs> we're going to be hosting a an ice cream Sunday. And the plan is, is that we are going to do a drive-by, a church drive-by, where we're going to give you some ice cream. And so we 
ask that you, those of our church members, and even if you're listening and you're not a member of the church, but you're down in a, in uh, the Hampton Road area, uh, the Chapel of the Centurion on Fort Monroe, on the 30th of August, we're going to set up on the sidewalk. We're going to have a couple of different booths set up, and we're going to do ice cream Sunday where you drive by in your car and we give you some ice cream and some other goodies. It's our way, really, of, of trying to see you live and in person. Hey, man. <laughs> Uh, we will still be doing social distancing, but we just want to see your face and blow a kiss at you. Amen. And, and, uh, and so we're planning for that. So put that on your calendar if the weather cooperates on the 30th of August. And I hope you see that as good news as well. Uh, praise God. We love you. We are praying for you. And we are also trusting that God will take care of you until we meet again. Amen.